Hi friends, hope you are fine. In the last video, we discussed about the classification of fungus. In this video, let us understand the classification of a beautiful silent group of plants, the bryophytes. Majority of the classification system classified bryophytes into three classes. First one is called as hepaticopsida or liverworts. And the second class is called as anthoceratopsida or hornworts. And the third class or the most advanced class is the bryopsida or the mosses. At the end of this discussion, you will be able to understand what are bryophytes, an outline of bryophytes classification systems, different classes of bryophytes, their characteristics with examples within 5 to 10 minutes. How can we define bryophytes? The etiology or word or chin of bryophytes, prion means moss, phyton means plants or moss like plants. They are seedless non-vascular plants often called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. Because of their amphibious habitat, they prefer to grow in amphibious environment, mostly terrestrial plants. There are some exceptions like Rixia fluitans, Rixiocarpus neatens, both are aquatic bryophytes, some leaves on dry rocks like Porella, some are epiphytes like Dendoceros, rarely there are saprophytes like Buxbomia. Now let us understand the three classes in detail. The first class is Hepaticopsida or liverworts. They are called as liverworts because these plants are widely used by herbalists for the treatment of liver ailments. Let us see the life cycle to understand the characteristics of this class. As you see, this is the gametophytic thallus, which is flat, dorsiventral. This is the arc andridiophore, the sex organ, male sex organ. And this is archegoniophore, the female sex organ. So, sex organs are formed on the dorsal side of the thallus. That means on the upper side of the thallus. Anthridia produces sperm cells or male gamete which is flagellated. Whereas, archegonia forms egg or female gamete, undergoes fertilization and forms zygote. Then, zygote divides and later form a sporophyte. In bryophytes, the dominant phase is the gametophytic phase. This is the sporophyte that is dependent on the gametophyte. In the case of hepatic opsida, the sporophyte consists of a, of a foot, then a zeta and a capsule. Foot is a structure that attaches to the gametophyte, helping in anchorage and absorption of nutrients from the gametophyte. Then there is a zeta that connects this foot to the capsule. Then capsule is a structure in which spores are formed. As you see, apart from spores, there are some specialized cells, spiral or coiled cells which are called as elators. They can absorb water, they are hygroscopic, helps in dispersal of the spores. Then this sporophyte, the sporogenous cells undergoes meiosis forming spores. Later the spores are released and spores germinate upon falling on a suitable substratum. Again, the gametophytic phase begins. In general, in bryophytes, the dominant phase is the haploid gametophytic phase and the sporophyte is dependent or parasitic on the gametophytic phase. Now let us summarize the characteristics of hepatic opsida. Dorsiventral flattened gametophyte, thallus or folios, aseptate rhizoids without septum or crossfold. Sex organs are formed on the dorsal surface, anthridium and archegoniophore. Sporophyte is simple, differentiated into food, zeta and capsule. Elators are present. There are special cells that helps in dispersal of the spores, sometimes absent in some genus like Rixia. Sporogenous tissue develops from endothesium of sporangium. Dehiscence of the capsule is irregular. Examples include Rixia and Marcantia. Now let us understand the characteristics of second class Anthoceratopsida. They are called as hornworts. So this is the life cycle of Anthoceratopsida. As you see, it starts with a gametophyte which is flat, dorsiventral, thallus, with rhizoids. Then anthridia and archegonium are the male and the female reproductive structures from which the male gamete, the sperm, and the female gamete, egg forms. Then it undergoes fusion forming the zygote. Zygote later give rise to a sporophyte. This is a sporophyte and this sporophyte has a horn-like appearance. Therefore, this group of Bryophytes are called as hornworts. Inside the sporogenous tissue 
or small mother cell under cause meiosis forming haploid spores and these spores germinate and finally forming this gametophyte again. And this is the structure of the sporophyte. There is a food, then there is a meristematic zone that helps in the growth of this sporophyte or this capsular region. Then there is a sterile tissue that is running which is called as a columella. There are elators, often called as pseudo elators as it is not single celled. It is a multicellular structure. Then many spores are formed and this is the sporogenous cells that undergoes meiosis forming spores. So sporophyte of Anthoceratopsida has three parts, a foot, a meristematic zone and the capsule. As you see, the sex organs are formed on the dorsal surface is anthridium and archegonium. Stomata is present on the surface of the sporophyte. Now let us summarize the characteristics of Anthoceratopsida. Dorsiventral flattened thalloid gametophyte, just like hepatic opsida. Sex organs are present on the dorsal surface. Sporophyte is elongated, food, meristematic region and capsule. Elators are present, often called as pseudo elators, at, as it is a multicellular structure and are present in, inside the capsule. Sporogenous tissue develops from amphithesium and endothesium form sterile columella. Dehiscence of capsule is irregular. Examples include anthocerose and nototylus. Now let us see the most advanced group among bryophytes, the bryopsida or the mosses. So this is the life cycle of a typical moss. As you see, this is a male gametophytic plant and this is a female gametophytic plant. Leafy, well developed with a well developed rhizoids for attachment or anchorage and absorption. Then anthridium and archegonium are there as sex organs. Anthridium forms the male gamete sperm, whereas archegonium forms the female gamete egg, undergoes fertilization and forms the zygote. It develops into a sporophyte, and sporophyte is an elongated structure. And this is the food. Then it, there is an elongated seta, and finally there is a capsule. Capsule anatomically is a well developed structure. The sporophyte is totally dependent on this gametophyte as in Anthoceratopsida and Hepaticopsida, a common characteristic of bryophytes. Spores upon maturity, it is released. Let us see the structure of this capsule in detail. So this is the structure of the capsule. So this is a seta, then there is a conducting strand that supplies nutrients to the developing spores. And here you can see the opening is called a lid-like opening, which is called as operculum. Then there is peristome teeth and annulus that are made up of thin walled cells, hygroscopic or water absorbing cells that helps in dispersal of spores upon maturity. Then there is columella. The sterile tissue is called as columella. Then spores are formed inside this structure from sporogenous tissue. So a well developed capsule is there in the case of priopsida or moses with efficient mechanism that helps in efficient dispersal of spores. Spores falling on suitable substratum, it first develops into protonema. With rhizoids, then leafy gametophyte forms again. Let us summarize the characteristics. Gametophytic plant body with axis leaves and rhizoids. That's why called as the most advanced group. Multicellular septate rhizoids, well-developed rhizoids meant for attachment and absorption. Sex organs that develops on the superficial cells at the apex of leafy gametophore. Then sporophyte consists of food zeta and capsule. Elators are absent. Capsule has a complex structure with well-developed spore dispersal mechanism. Sporogenous tissue that develops from the outer layer of endothesium. Inner layer forms sterile columella. Dehiscence of capsule is regular. Examples include funeria, sphagnum and polytrichum. So let me summarize. The three classes of bryophytes are Hepaticopsida, the liverworts, Anthoceratopsida, the hornworts, and Bryopsida, the mosses, the most advanced group among bryophytes. Remember, bryophytes are the most diverse group of plants after flowering plants or angiosperms with approximately 15,000 to 25,000 species. Hope you are benefited from this video. Take care, stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.